As they sped through space on September 12, 1966, in pursuit of the unmanned rocket to which they were supposed to dock their Gemini 11 space capsule, there was a moment when Pete Conrad and Dick Gordon experienced a sudden flash of bright light. The result of the reflected glare of the sun glinting off the target vehicle, the bright beam temporarily blinded the astronauts as they closed in on their goal. Despite the unsettling nature of the experience, Conrad and Gordon reacted as coolly as any suburban dad driving the family through a sunny patch of road. They simply donned their sunglasses and continued to pursue the task at hand. Then, one hour and 25 minutes after they'd left the ground, Pete Conrad and Dick Gordon docked their Gemini 11 spacecraft with the unmanned Agena target vehicle during their first orbit around the Earth. The docking went smoothly, culminating a thrilling chase that had begun when Gemini 11 first entered orbit, some 430 kilometers behind the target vehicle. After catching up with the Agena, Conrad and Gordon had spent a brief period of rendezvous alongside the target, and they then maneuvered the two vehicles together. Once they'd achieved the crucially important docking during their first orbit, Conrad and Gordon took turns undocking their Gemini 11 spacecraft from the Agena target vehicle and then bringing the two vehicles together again. The subsequent dockings went as well as the initial link had. The ability to rendezvous and dock during the initial orbit of a given spaceflight was a vital step toward the fast approaching Apollo program. In the fall of 1966, as Project Gemini moved closer to its final mission, NASA's management hoped for a first flight of Apollo sometime in early 1967, with the program ultimately landing astronauts on the moon well before the end of the decade. The first U.S. docking had been achieved during Gemini 8. During that landmark flight, Neil Armstrong and David Scott were nearly killed when a stuck thruster on their Gemini craft had caused them to enter a numbing spin while they were docked to the target vehicle. The mission had to be cut short, and Armstrong and Scott made an emergency return to Earth to ensure their safety. Gemini 9 began in tragedy when the prime crew, Elliot C. and Charles Bassett, were killed in an airplane crash. Their replacements, Thomas Stafford and Eugene Cernan, were frustrated in their attempts at docking because of a malfunction in their target vehicle. John Young and Michael Collins were able to achieve their rendezvous and docking goals during Gemini 10 in July of 1966. They docked their Gemini capsule to an unmanned Agena and then used the target vehicle's propulsion system to maneuver the linked vehicles. A hoped-for second docking had to be abandoned, however, because of the amount of fuel the initial docking had required. Thus, the ease with which Conrad and Gordon were able to rendezvous with their target and then achieve multiple dockings was a particularly welcome development, given the difficulties the tasks had presented during earlier flights. Conrad and Gordon would spend several more days in space during their Gemini 11 odyssey. Gordon made two spacewalks, one of which resulted in Conrad's memorable exhortation that his crewmate, Rydum Cowboy, as Gordon straddled the target vehicle while trying to attach a tether for a flight experiment. They returned to Earth in Gemini 11 on September 15, 1966. A little more than three years later, Pete Conrad and Dick Gordon would again use the skills they'd honed during Gemini 11 when they traveled to the moon together with fellow astronaut Alan Bean during the Apollo 12 lunar landing mission in November 1969.